Okay, we've already talked about left and right hand limits as far as reading values off of a graph. And previously we've talked about how you can find a limit algebraically. So now we're gonna combine those together and talk about how you can find a limit algebraically if you have left and right hand side limits. So let's take a look at this one. This one we have a graph that is provided. Uh, and it's just saying we wanna find the y value as x approaches four from the left, from the negative side. Now here's four. And as I approach this from the left-hand side, I'm on, I'm on the graph and it's going up like this. As I get close to the four, it's going down, getting lower, lower, and lower. So when I get very, very close to four, the y value uh, is gonna be zero. So it means that looking at the graph, I can say that that approach is a zero. Now, if I didn't have a graph provided, how could I do this? Well, I would actually just go ahead and plug four directly into that, like we did before for previous limits. So even though I have four going from the negative side, I can still just put the value of four in there, and by doing that, I would get a zero here, and I would end up getting a zero as the, the limit. Now, unfortunately, I can't do that same thing for the bottom one, because if I take two and plug it in there, I'm gonna get division by zero. Uh, and so this one, if I take a look at the graph, I can tell that my answer, if I'm approaching two from the positive side, approaching two from the right, uh, I, get, I get very close to this open circle. So all this is telling me is that it's gonna be a fraction uh, between negative one and zero that's negative. That's all I really can tell from this. I don't have enough detail to know exactly what that fraction is. I could try and, and guess something, but I wanna get the uh, exact limit. So this one, I need to use some algebraic techniques that, that we used uh, on previously when we talked about finding a limit algebraically. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this since that's not gonna, even though it provided it for us, I have a ballpark estimate of what my answer would be, but not exact. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, write this out, write the steps by simplifying it algebraically. So I'm still gonna start with my limit there that hasn't changed yet. On top, that's still the same, two minus x, but the bottom, I wanna factor. So I can do difference of squares, x plus two, x minus two on that one. And I wanna try and see if I can simplify this. Now there's a rule from algebra that says that if you do a minus b and you're dividing it by b minus a, so it's the same exact things, but you're just subtracting it, these actually cancel out and you get uh, negative one. That's because one of these you can factor out a negative and when you factor out a negative, it becomes the one that you have on top. Now I see that actual same thing happening here. I have two minus x and x minus two. So I can cross those out and replace it with a negative one, which means that if I take it down to the next step here, I have the limit as x approaches two from the positive side. What I have left is negative one over x plus two. So now I've eliminated the, the, the one that uh, was the problem. So again, all this gets replaced with negative one on top here. Uh, and so I get this. If I put a two now in the bottom, plug it in directly, then I get negative one fourth as the answer. And looking at the graph that was provided, uh, that, that does look like where that open circle was, the y value. So as the x value here approaches two from the positive side, the y value approaches negative one fourth. Okay, next one, we wanna find the limit. Another one of these uh, one-sided limits, and we wanna do this algebraically. Now, this time we don't have a graph that's provided. Now, if I take one and I put it in into this one, I do not have any of the denominators going to zero. So that's good because this one, then I don't have to worry about using, doing any kind of algebra techniques. Sometimes, again, you can just plug the number directly in. So even though it's approaching one, uh, from the negative side, I'm still just gonna treat this as if x is just going to one. So what I'll do here is I'm going to just plug the one into all the x's that I have. So I do that for each one. And then I'm just gonna simplify what I get as a result. So putting that all in, what I end up getting is, uh, so I don't have to show the limit notation anymore because I've already plugged the number uh, into it now. Uh, I get one half and then this next one's gonna be seven over one. And then inside here, I get two sevens. And what's gonna happen here is the, the twos are gonna cancel out, and the sevens are gonna cancel out, and I get one over one, uh, which is equal to one. So that's, that's gonna be my final answer. So the limit as x approaches one 
uh, from the negative side, from the left, it's going to be 1. 